This Bristol-based company has its humble beginnings as a spring maker for women's hoop skirts and the burgeoning clock industry. The year, 1857. And then the original buildings were more like barns, quite frankly. Tom Barnes' great-great-grandfather Wallace founded the company. And as Tom tells the story, he was quite the entrepreneur. Wallace Barnes made springs for a company that went bankrupt and couldn't pay him. So they gave him a load of what was called uh, hoop skirt wire for women's hoop skirts uh, in lieu of payment. Wallace hauled that wire up to Albany. Where he traded the wire for a haberdashery store. That sold sewing notions, something Wallace wasn't so keen on. So he traded that for a farm in Missouri. Didn't really want to be a farmer in Missouri. So he then traded that to a blacksmith shop here in Bristol. Not really his interest either. So Wallace Barnes sold the blacksmith shop for $1,600. He took that $1,600 and bought the A.S. Platt Company. Uh, so he went full circle, ended up uh, running the company that he worked for, and the company started to uh, take off. Supplying its signature springs to growing industries during the height of the Industrial Revolution. And they came to us uh, as a spring maker to, uh, to supply those parts that would provide the energy to make them work. The pen that you have in your hand to the automobile that you, you drove here this morning with. I mean, it, it's, they're, they're in everything. Through the years, Barnes supplied to the automotive industry and then to the military. And when Tom Barnes' father, Wally, joined the company, Barnes started to diversify and expand. If you're going to survive for 157 years, you have to change. But you're still doing what the company kind of started out as on some level here, right? Yes, I mean, these parts are transmission parts uh, for the automotive uh, industry. There's a, um, a bike spring that, that, we, that we worked with, um, with a bike manufacturer, a racing bike manufacturer. We developed that spring, not only um, a different configuration, but a different material. So basically it ended up being lighter and taking up a smaller footprint. And while the company still makes springs at Associated Spring in Bristol, this is only a small piece of Barnes Group's international profile. The company now employs 4,300 people in 60 locations across the world. There's Barnes Aerospace, which supplies parts to the major jet engine makers. In the Windsor facility here, we make structural components, so um, cases. And uh, right up the street in East Granby, we repair a lot of the same type of products, cases rotating parts. In the past two years, Barnes Group did what might have been considered unthinkable to founder Wallace Barnes. This company that built its reputation on steel ventured into plastics, buying Manor in Germany and Synventive in Peabody, Massachusetts. According to Tom, his ancestors are probably rolling over in their graves thinking that we're making plastic uh, systems for the injection molding industry, which is a big change. What we're actually producing are the systems that actually produce the plastic products. Synventive produces hot runner systems, which feed liquid plastic into high-tech molds. At the Peabody plant, they're headed to automotive customers to ultimately make bumpers and dashboards. Plastics are becoming more and more embodied into automobiles as a means to reduce weight and drive overall fuel efficiency. We have to look for uh, ways to adapt to what's going on in the marketplace and, and lighter plastic parts is a lot better than some of the uh, heavier steel that, uh, that we're typically making. In the 19th century, Wallace Barnes Spring Company provided components to the leading technology of the time. And today, the Barnes Group is following his original mission. I'm very proud of where the company is today. As a company, I would say we've been very progressive. 